Hello, my name is Mark Swift. I'm Director of Marketing here at Universal Electric. Uh, we're going to talk today about the new Starline Critical Power Monitor, which you see displayed here. We're going to show you the displayed version, which is on the bench here, and the non-displayed version, which you see plugged into the busway. Uh, to install the Starline plug-in unit into the busway, you actually insert the paddle into the busway, turn this to you, towards you, take our hanger bolt, insert into the appropriate channel in the busway, and then tighten up using a wrench. As you can see, when the plug-in unit was installed in the busway, the meter automatically turns on. Uh, this will be true for both OB units and our plug-in units. Uh, you can see on the face here the power light, which is indicated to the left there, which is blinking green. Uh, you have various connectivity methods which we'll go through, uh, both on the displayed and non-displayed versions. So we have an Ethernet port here, standard RJ45 jack, which can communicate both SNMP and Modbus TCP. You also have two RJ11 jacks for Modbus RTU. Uh, we'll talk about the provisioning of those and how you actually log into the Integral web page to set the settings up for both of those protocols here in a bit. Uh, what you also see on the front here is the MAC address of each unit. Uh, so you'll be able to notify uh, your IT folks or any of your support staff that will be assisting in the IT implementation side of things to uh, those that piece of information. And then you also, that's for the wired Ethernet port. And then for the uh, units that are equipped with Wi-Fi access, you'll also see the, uh, the antenna, which protrudes from the front of the unit, with the MAC address of that unit as uh, well. So you actually have two uh, MAC addresses for devices enabled with Wi-Fi. For Starline CPM units that are equipped with the display option, you can see here the full color display and a myriad of options that you'll be able to scroll through which I'll talk about here as we go through the uh, various menus on the screen. Uh, there's radio buttons equipped on the right hand side so you can actually uh, play and pause the scrolling through of the various screens automatically or you can actually set that to pause by pressing that button. Uh, the left and right arrows, which are the next two radio buttons, are there to scroll back and forth between screens and then also used to change settings on specific screens. And then there's the, the last radio button here down at the bottom is actually the configuration uh, button, which uh, we'll go through that as well. Uh, you can see here on units that are equipped with Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi antenna uh, shows the connectivity. And of course the uh, Starline brand there prominently displayed at the bottom. So to go ahead and let the automatic scrolling start, you just hit the top radio button uh, and it actually goes to a play mode. So you can see it scrolling through the various uh, screenshots here. Uh, to stop on any particular one, all you need to do is hit the pause button and then it will stay on that screen until you unpause the unit again. Uh, to go back and forth between screens, of course, I mentioned you have the left and right buttons which will uh, enable you to go through and uh, get to the page that you want to see. Uh, this is a true power monitor uh, capable up to taking in six current inputs, um, calculates kilowatt per hour usage, and it is uh, revenue grade accurate to greater than 99%. You have your line to line uh, readings, line to neutral options available too, um, your voltage, apparent power, reactive power, and the like. So anything that you would need to see there from an uh, energy perspective you would be able to see. Uh, the screen that's up now actually shows the IP address information. Uh, so you can actually see that's the LAN uh, side of things, so the Ethernet port on the front here. Um, by default, the IP address is set up to 192.168.1.99. Uh, that is actually how the unit will come configured from the factory. So whenever you want to log into the Integral web page to make changes to the IP addresses, set alarms, any information within that that you can configure, that is the IP address that you'll need to uh, know to be able to connect to that. And we'll actually talk through that process here later on in the video. Uh, you can actually see the MAC address, which is uh, on the sticker here above, also displayed on the uh, unit on the screen. 
Uh, for non-displayed units, of course, you would not be able to see that, and that's why we actually put the sticker on the face. Um, for units equipped with Wi-Fi, you'll also have the Wi-Fi uh, IP address information here on the screen, and by default, that information, uh, that IP address is set to uh, 192.168.1.98 and then hit the play button again to have that go through. Um, there's information on the, uh, you can actually name these units, uh, set up location information, things like that that are also displayed on the screen here. So from a configuration uh, scenario, you can actually set the time frame, the duration in which the uh, screen cycles go. So you can actually increase that or decrease that from uh, two to six seconds. Uh, you can actually set the brightness on the display as well. So a lot of people um, uh, like to have maybe a brighter scenario that you can see, or if you want to turn that down, you can actually see here, you can scroll between um, anywhere from 100% down to 10. You can also set the screen to go blank uh, after a period of time. Uh, so you can actually have it time out. It will go blank, and then to uh, turn that back on, then all you would need to do is press one of these radio buttons, and then it will uh, um, scroll back on. So that's something that you can set as well and then takes you back to the main screen for configuration of the integral web page you actually need to connect to the Ethernet port of the device since uh, this is typically accommodated with a laptop a crossover cable is needed to connect to the face of the Ethernet port in the meter so as you can see here I have a crossover cable and we'll go ahead and connect that directly to the meter and then plug that into the Ethernet port on your laptop. As we mentioned earlier, a laptop computer is typically needed for the configuration of the unit uh, by logging into the Integral web page. To accommodate this, you need to go in uh, and actually change the IP address information on your laptop to be able to connect to the meter via the crossover cable, which we just showed connecting to the face of the meter. To accommodate this, you go to the network uh, icon on your desktop of your laptop. Uh, this can actually be accommodated in a whole host of scenarios uh, depending upon your operating system and things like that, but we're going to show one way here. If you go down to the properties selection on there, this actually brings up the network and sharing center, and then you go up to change adapter settings and you connect to the uh, one that's connected directly to the meter which is this local area connection uh, icon here. If you go down to the properties tab it actually brings up the information for that uh, physical port on your laptop and you go to the internet protocol version 4 IPv4 settings click on the properties icon you can see right now it's actually set up to attain an IP address automatically you actually need to click on the radio button that says use the following IP address and if you type in 192.168.1.10 that will work to uh, connect to that and actually the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 by default as well and if you just click OK close that, then you will now be able to connect directly to the meter. So all you need to do to connect to the meter once your IP address information has been changed is actually open your browser and type in the default IP address of the meter, which we discussed, which is 192.168.1.99. Hit enter. And then you can actually see that it pulls up the integral web page for the meter. This is the mechanism by which you can change your IP address information, which will show you both on the wired port and the Wi-Fi. Uh, set your Modbus address for people doing a uh, implementing a Modbus RTU scenario. You can look at the various feed outlet configurations depending upon whether this is a, uh, a branch circuit or end feed application. Uh, you can look at your outlet by outlet uh, configurations as well if it's a plug-in unit that has multiple outlets configured within it. Uh, you can set alarm conditions, and then you can also uh, go to the configurations tab, which has a whole myriad of features, uh, upgrading firmware, uh, changing other information, things like that, which we'll talk through. So you can actually see here, uh, this is set up 
uh, like you would see a typical device, Ethernet based device uh, with your uh, uh, tabs up at the top there that you can scroll through and then once you're on a particular tab then there are sub tabs underneath those categories as well. So on the home tab here you can see uh, you have three screens there, the summary, device info, and co communications information tabs, which just give you some general information on the device. Uh, you can see your feed uh, uh, percentage ratings, uh, total voltage, uh, power factor, frequency. Of course, this is a 60 hertz installation uh, being domestic here. Um, and then uh, your kilowatt hour uh, usage there is calculated down at the bottom. Uh, if you click over to the device info tab, this actually shows you uh, some general information. You can see the IP address information, uh, device ID, and that's actually a configurable field, which I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, the firmware version, uh, the meter version, uh, Wi-Fi, um, the calibration uh, date, and uh, some other information that will be useful for you. And then on the uh, communications info tab, this actually shows uh, both the LAN and WAN. Uh, the LAN settings if it's just a wired only scenario or also the uh, Wi-Fi settings if it is a unit that is equipped with Wi-Fi as well. And you can also see the uh, SSID information and the encryption type um, and those are settable fields here which I'll show you in a minute as well. Uh, if you click on the feeds tab This actually shows you the value. You can see the voltage there, uh, line to neutral, and voltage line to line. Uh, once again, the frequency information, and then uh, min and max values. On the current, shows you your uh, three phases of current and your neutral uh, max uh, values, and. Um, some other information, and then on the energy and power factor tab, you can see your active, reactive, apparent, and power factor. Um, and uh, all that information will be populated after the uh, units are, are set up and configured. Clicking on the outlet tab, So you can actually see there, uh, you can have up to four outlets configured for these devices. This, uh, the first tab under the outlet tab actually is a summary page. And then you can go by outlet by outlet scenarios for your particular configuration and look at uh, similar information on an outlet by outlet basis. The next tab is the alarms tab. You can actually set uh, min and max values and um, save those settings and then uh, you can be notified uh, via SNMP traps or email notification uh, if you exceed a min or max alarm condition which I'll show you how to set up here in a minute. Under the configurations tab you can see uh, once again uh, some various information that you'll be able to set. So uh, the administration tab under configuration is actually where you can type in the device ID device location and set up your password. Uh, by default the admin and factory uh, user passwords are set to factory, all lowercase. Uh, you can actually change those here and then save those settings. Underneath the Ethernet tab, you can actually set uh, the unit to operate in either DHCP or static uh, IP addressing schemes. You can see there uh, by default it is set to static with your IP address set at 192.168.1.99, uh, your uh, subnet mask, and then your gateway as well. So those are all configurable fields. Uh, you can also set that to DHCP and then it will automatically obtain an IP address from your router. Similar information is uh, on the Wi-Fi tab of the page. So if it is a unit that is enabled with Wi-Fi, uh, you will have a similar option, so you can set that to either DHCP or static. Uh, you can see here, uh, as we discussed earlier, the IP address uh, by default for the unit in uh, static mode is 192.168.1.98. Uh, you can actually set up your SSID uh, that you would like the unit to connect to, and then also set your uh, Wi-Fi password to connect onto your access point 
or router. And then also here down at the bottom you can see we have two encryption types, WPA and WPA2. So whichever encryption method you have deployed on your network, you can select here. Next tab under the configurations tab is the SNMP tab. Uh, this is actually to set up uh, SNMP traps. So you can either uh, put in an IP address for your trap locations, uh, either trap one or two, and then you also have the uh, option to set up email notification. Uh, so you would be emailed if a, uh, an alarm condition would be uh, uh, set inside the meter itself. Next tab is the Modbus tab. This is actually where you can set your Modbus address, so 1 to 247. Um, you can also set the uh, baud rate of your uh, Modbus network, either 9200 or 90 or uh, 192 or uh, 9600 baud. And then you also have the uh, ability there to change the stop bits from 1 to 2. Next tab is the email notification tab. This is actually where you set up the information that if you would uh, uh, go into an alarm condition, um, how you would want to be notified. So you can actually put an uh, email address in there um, and then actually set up the information for your email server uh, to be able to log in and, and send that information out. And then the last tab um, within the uh, configuration tab is the uploads tab. So the nice thing about this uh, from, uh, from Universal Electric as new versions of firmware or new versions of the web page are uh, become available, we can actually distribute that out to you and you can easily upgrade this uh, via the integral web page. We also have some network scripts that can run uh, for people who are more technically savvy that if they have the list of IP addresses or MAC addresses for those devices, you can actually do a bulk upload but if you just want to go ahead and do uh, one at a time, you have the ability here to do that as well. So uh, from time to time, as uh, new versions of uh, uh, software come out from us, this gives you a nice, easy way to uh, accommodate uploads and upgrading the device. Thank you.